Hello everybody and welcome back to my, my vlog and again today we got another box um, this one well, I've got some high hopes for this one but um, of course as they say the proof is in the pudding I'm not quite sure what that means apart from the I don't know but again we got these uh, box jobby and I do like the boxes really do like the boxes well, because they're reusable and I do like that and, uh, and they keep things protected which is really nice so this is another pre-amplifier kit this one is well if it's if it's circuit is actually, um, let's say, modern day version of the circuit from 1999. I'm sure we'll take a quick peek at that in a moment. Now I will let you know now that this is probably going to be a two part video. The reasoning behind that is this. Setup work to be done on this. Not a lot. Nothing to put anybody off. But a little bit of setup work to be done. And um, and we're going to be doing some extra tests. Board looks nice. It's, uh, it's a bit. It's bigger. It's then the compared to the last one, it's like twice the size. And we've got two individual channels. So this is one channel, and this is the other channel. We got our power supply side here. Um, so we can look at that part like that. And it says here the input for this, we got a just let me point this out first because we don't get to see these very often these days. There we got a discrete bridge rectifier. So instead of having the the one block with the four diodes in there, we got four individual diodes here. And uh, we got our 24 volt, zero, 24 volt. I think you can go 22 volts to uh, 28 volts or something, but the recommendation is 24 volts. We got our big filter caps. Uh, IRF, what's going on here then, these are MOSFETs, IRF, I wish I could see that, let's zoom in, 9234, 9Z34Ns, right, because uh, we'll see in the description anyway, in a minute, that this is um, what they call a true T. DC preamplifier. So here we got it. It says here, look, Moffy Acoustics PM14 preamp, uh, and this is based on the Marantz uh, PM14 amplifier preamplifier. Um, back then, I thought I think they call them pre main amplifiers. Uh, yeah, but there's a little bit of setup to do. There's uh, one, two, three, four variable pots here, multi-turn pots, which need to be set up so we get the right voltages around the board. Uh, we've got our input here. Star ground system. Again, this is uh, always nice, and I did notice, we'll have a quick look at the screen in a second. Nice, big, thick. CD bag, which is nice. Ooh. So it comes with heat sinks. Because there's a one of those MOSFETs. They want to be heat sunk. And we've got some more. C324A136s. These want to be um, heat sunk as well. 
I'm going to take a peek at what those are in a minute. That's nice. These do feel like they are actually uh, genuine. Because I've had capacitors before, quite big, that felt really light. But I noticed that all the capacitors that I bought, store bought, you know, from a proper distribution. Um, and they're this sort of size. They've got a bit of weight to them. I mean, they're not heavy, but they've got, you know, they don't just feel like they're hollow cans. And these certainly don't feel that way. Does that say 125C on there? Wow. I expect these to be getting... Oh, let's just do that. I expect these to be getting warm. Well, they're, they're better like that. It's just, they, they, they cost extra. Um, they need 125 Cs. Um, and they're going to last longer, which is good. So we got another bag inside a bag. Very nice again. Uh, I'm just going to pop these in here just to keep everything organised here because it's going quite easy. Let's get it. Everything in disarray. And let's look what we got. And oh, there's lots in here. There's lots. These are all diodes and re the resistors. No, no, these are. I thought these were diodes, but they're not. The, the resistors. And the nice thing about them that I can tell straight away is that. Uh, the paint's not falling off, which is always nice because I've had resistors before. Oh, three watts. Uh, where you know you look round and you see the paints wearing off, so you, you just sort of know that the quality side of things isn't isn't what you might want. So yeah, this is a. Uh, this is supposed to be a pretty good scene of diodes, a whole bunch of scene of diodes. So I'm not going to go through every component. It's nice that they've split up some of these uh, transistors from the other transistors. So once we know what one lot are, we'll know that the other lot we're using uh, these. Uh, just try to see if they look genuine or not. Let's have a little look. These are supposed to be BD 139s and 140s. Uh, semi on. So they could be. They could be. I know MPX did these as well. And I've used them before. And there's nothing wrong with them at all. So you use an audio amplifier. What we got there? Get the light on this better. We'll see better. So we'll look. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's my eyes or. Yep, F9Z. Does that say 84? You'd probably be able to see it better than me on the big screen. There's some little phone thing in front of me. Anyway, let's see back out on that. These are the sort of things we can look at as we go along. And just, like always, if there's any issues, I'll let you know. Of course, it's... Um, so, yeah, we got our... These are going to be for... Some of the smaller, we won't need them on there, but we probably need them on these. Need to insulate them up. Of course, these ones don't have that. They're in the plastic shell. All right, well, okay. Oh, yep, they even send out the, for the screws when they go through. Make sure they stay insulated, which is all good. I'm just gonna expect everything to be there. And I've got no doubt that everything is there. So while that's just like that, quick look at that board again. Um, let's take a peek at the screen and see what it is we've actually got here. So, um, I've got the kit, obviously. Uh, a Moffy, again. Uh, we're actually quite happy with this uh, Moffy so far. There's been no uh, no surprises, negatively. Marat's PM14A, fully discrete preamplifier DIY kit. 
And uh, somebody asked me the other day, what's the difference between, you know, the fully discrete, what is fully discrete? And fully discrete means it's all just individual components. Yeah. If you have like a chip amp, a lot of the circuitry is built inside the chip itself. So that's not like fully discrete. Discrete individual parts. Uh, so you can, yeah, you can buy it as a kit. It's something sort of, you know, with the tax. You got to put tax on top of this twenty percent. Uh, I'm in uh, GB, the UK, uh, sixteen sixty nine plus twenty percent. Uh, and you, you can buy it pre pre built twenty two fifty nine plus a twenty percent. Um, you know that's going to be oh, going to be a bigger number in Australia and uh, probably about twenty five dollars or something in. In the States. What we got here, very fast delivery, amazing sound to the disadvantages of the above ridge elemental bass and as a consequence dancing with a tambourine when setting up. After the revision everything is fine thanks to the seller. The product was tracked all the way. Alright. So what we got then, the description, yeah, that's just about the store, this is um, about, you know, you can have some soldering experience, etc, setting up this. Um, the one thing I don't see it says on a lot of these is, you know, really, you don't have to, but it can be advantageous to you, just to give a bit of a clean off with some um, Ibisil, I don't know how you say it. With this uh, isopropyl alcohol, yeah, rubbing alcohol, that's the way I refer to it generally. Uh, just give it a clean off because um, it comes in handy. And another little tip as well is don't pull the ends off these and then push the whole lead through the board because it gets sticky left on the ends and that can get inside the hole that you're trying to push through and stay in there so when it comes to soldering you're not getting as good as a connection what I tend to do is just nip off the ends like that of my um, resistors and such just to make sure that there's no sticky you can get on the insides and means that you may not get as good a contact as what you might like all right so this is what it is now this is the welcome deal 1266 um, it doesn't doesn't normally cost that it's normally more this figure I think it was 1669 something like that that I paid for it uh, and that's for the kit you can buy it pre-assembled and that looks to be about the sort of price uh, that it is but like I said this says welcome deal so if you've not used that express before you can have it cheaper so let's have a look down here um, yeah, uh, it's a DIY kit project, fully discrete, uh, fully direct coupled preamplifier, um, or DC coupled, direct coupled. So it's uh, compared with the commonly, commonly reproduction of the PM14A, we improved. All right, using a two stage book. Fil um, regulated filter to low pass filter prevents power noise from being introduced into the amplifier, pure sound, um, close to battery, which is a good thing because the battery is the quietest type of power supply you can have. The high voltage power supply uses MOSFET as pass transistors, which have a sense of tube sound characteristics but rejecting the rectification and regulation noise. Voltage soft start feature is included which will take about five second, seconds to reach the design voltage. All in one design, single point grounding or star grounding, ground resistant close to 0 0.02 ohms, resistance value low noise design. Okay fully direct coupled this is a true DC amplifier care must be taken to ensure that the input source does not have DC offset at its output the DIY kit contains the PCB and the components needed on the PCB but does not include the power transformer 
you should know that anyway. Uh, there's some debugging to be done on here. Um, so we look, all finished PCBs are carefully hand soldered and fully test, blah, blah, yeah. Right, so if this is the schematic, um, that's pretty good because straight away we can see from the input that we're using a, a long, a long, um, a differential input, a long tail pair, um, which is good because that helps reduce any noise coming in, uh, you know, before it even gets to any of this uh, driving side of things. So that's nice. Uh, we got a bit here. This is a bit of um, you got four pots, and these are going to be set up. So adjust um, 20k pot. I think this is 20k. This is 20k. This is 500, and this is 500. So adjust a 20k variable resistor to make plus 20 volt DC between both ends of A and G. So here's A. We want 20 volts reading from this um, anode side of this diode to, to the ground. So a negative probe here, positive probe there on the, um, on the, on the multimeter. And then the same thing for a minus uh, between B and G. So B is here, minus 20 volts on the cathode side of this diode and the ground there and we got to make sure that uh, we adjust up the 500R to make less than 20 millivolt DC you want these to be about the same as well uh, on the both ends of out negative so uh, sorry uh, left out and right out and ground so we want to make sure that there's less than 20 millivolts uh, DC on there Uh, yeah, it does work, giving it a bit of a clean up uh, and you know, checking that, that you haven't got any dry joints or anything. Of course, you want to do that anyway. Uh, there's a, a, a silicon based insulator for the, the MOSFET, the ones with the metal wax, the BD31361139 uh, and 140. Uh, don't need them because they're in bullet plastic shells. Enclosures. Uh, so there's all our parts. It's always nice when they do this bill of materials because then you can, if you want to, go and find your own. I've got some different iron 4148s um, that I could put in place of these ones just because I've got store-bought. Uh, yeah, I, I, I realise this is a platform for buying things off, uh, but I'm not. I'm just going to use what's in the kit. If for any reason I decide to change those out, I'll let you know. Okay, we can have a little look at the actual Marantz here. This is the preamplifier. Um, Marantz PM14. It was released in 1998. There's a bit of information there, but just for the sake of the length of the video. I'm not going to go through that whole thing but we can have a quick little look um, the power amplifier section uses the well the latest Marantz current feedback type in this method phase compensation is reduced by lowering the feedback impedance an extremely high speed amplifier can be realized in addition the amplifier is stable against load fluctuations and the output choke coil which is harmful to sound quality can be removed this is also advantageous in terms of signal to noise. Uh, I'm just uh, dialing to amplify the output stage a single push pull, so that's like 200 watts. So this is uh, it's supposed to be like a pre-amplifier, but this, this is the pre-amplifier built in to the power amplifier. So this isn't actually, you know, what uh what we got here i think this is just a, a copy or a you know uh, i'm not sure it's going to be exactly the same um as the pre-amplifier side of that 
particular uh, amplifier there. Yeah, because they're going to be like different parts in here as well, because they've got moving magnet, moving cartridge for the uh, phono inputs. I just thought that, you know, th th there's that's that there, and I'm not going to get through it, but we can always take a peek. Ooh, I like the transformer and the caps. Big old heat sinks there for the power outside. But I'm not quite sure where the Uh, where the inputs, where the inputs are here, so well, that circuitry will be for the other part. I'm not sure, but anyway, if anybody wants to go and have a peek at this, I will put a uh, a link in the description for it. So look back to what we got then. Well, that's it. So what we're gonna do then is get it built up and. Um, do some tests on it, see what it's like.